I've been planning on doing a video on this because I think this is amazing. And I mean, incredible. US scientists have built an efficient ice battery system, which will cut energy bills. Uh, an ice battery. Very intriguing form of energy storage. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Ice has been the go-to solution for keeping drinks cold in summer. You wouldn't think of it as being an option for energy storage, right? But researchers are actually developing ice batteries. Scientists at Texas A&M University are developing advanced ice batteries that can store and release thermal energy with seriously impressive efficiency. Their work could change how large buildings manage heating and cooling while actually um, saving uh, huge amounts of money for the electrical grid and even for the, you know, the tenants of those buildings as well. Dr. Patrick Schamberger, this is not a sham, this, that's just his name, Schamberger, Associate Professor in the Department of Materials Science and Engineering, is leading research to improve the materials used in these systems. His team's findings could improve how these systems work in real-world applications. He explained that while ICE battery technology has existed for years, its performance still depends heavily on the materials actually used. His research looks at actually finding how to make ICE batteries efficient. So how do ICE batteries actually work? Well, an ICE battery operates on a very simple concept. Water, or potentially other materials, are frozen at night when electricity demand is low and power is cheaper or frozen during the day using excess solar energy. Then, during the day, the stored cold energy is released to cool buildings. This reduces strain on the grid during peak hours and lowers costs for consumers. So really, this is the kind of thing where you'd want to use it if it's really hot during the day in an office building, for example. And remember, this might not be relevant for you, but actually millions and millions of people every day go to work in offices that are just created out of glass. The thermal efficiency of these offices is horrendous. I mean, really bad. So they're using billions of dollars of electricity to heat offices where the walls are all made of glass. There's just many of these buildings, many thousands of them all around the planet. The ice battery technology has been around for a while, Schamberger said, but there are problems on the material side that we're fixing. What's the right material at the right temperature? Can we make it reversible? Can we make it last for 30 years? Although these systems save energy by cutting daytime demand, they still require significant power at nighttime. Unless, of course, large scale versions are installed and those versions can improve efficiency you can actually freeze nearly 500,000 pounds of ice every night and then use that to cool your offices during the day. This makes efficiency at the material level actually critical since small improvements in storage and release can translate into large savings and much more reliable performance. So the team are actually using, surprise, surprise, salt as the solution to make them more efficient. So basically this is a salt and water battery. The research team is using salt hydrates to improve the efficiency. These are salts that naturally contain water molecules within their crystal structures. They can absorb and release thermal energy depending on the conditions. By adjusting the chemical composition, the researchers aim to design materials that work at temperatures best suited for real world cooling and heating systems. And they're basically saying that adding these salt hydrates actually is the game changer that's needed to make these batteries really commercially viable. We're putting it at a specific temperature so it's compatible with a particular HVAC system integration approach to the lead researcher. This compatibility is important for buildings that use advanced HVAC systems or heat pumps, which can both heat and cool spaces. With better tailored materials, an ice battery system can do more than just store cold it can support flexible energy use across different building needs. One of the main technical hurdles apparently is phase segregation. 
In many salt hydrate systems, the material separates into solid and liquid phases with different densities and compositions. This separation reduces the reliability and efficiency of the system of repeated cycles. The study digs into the thermodynamics of these changes, aiming to find compositions that avoid degradation. And the ultimate goal is to create materials that can cycle reliably for decades without losing performance. So how else could ice batteries be used? Well, apparently, according to interesting engineering, ice batteries could play a big role in stabilizing the entire power grid. As more renewable energy sources like wind and solar come online, the grid is becoming more variable. Storing thermal energy at predictable times and releasing it when demand spikes offers a way to balance this variability. In other words, there's actually a lot of times when it's really windy, yeah, and it's still sunny. So we're getting plenty of electricity from the sun to power our grid batteries. But there's obviously times when you're going to have a lot of wind and you're going to have, you know, this a situation where it would actually be of an advantage to be able to store that electricity in the nighttime, not just during the day. We don't want to solve grid problems by building more power plants, the researchers stated. That's a costly solution. They'd have to charge higher rates overall. So systems like ice batteries can be built far cheaper than lithium ion phosphate batteries. That's where this is a solution. If you compare the price, theoretically, of a, an ice with salt battery in comparison to a lithium ion phosphate battery, the cost could be well over 50% less. And that's where these batteries have an advantage. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Now there's a lot of confusion here because people are getting confused between molten hydroxide salt batteries, which are called liquid metal batteries, and with a new technology called molten hydroxide salt storage. So what is the difference between the two? Well, here I'm going to tell you and then show you the biggest battery in the world powered by molten hydroxide salts. Molten hydroxide salt batteries, also known as liquid metal batteries, while once they were a promising technology that looked like it was far off into the future, but they are now actually here. If you ask artificial intelligence like ChatGPT what its thoughts are on this type of battery, it will tell you it's a product that, well, it shows incredible promise, but actually it hasn't reached commercial viability yet. However, ChatGPT would be very, very wrong.